Good morning and happy Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And I am rejoicing today because of the amazing truth that I get to share with you. God's truth. And it's going to be awesome. Before we get started, though, let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Jesus, I thank you for creating each and every one of us, Lord, and for as you created us, for loving us. We know that you have loved us and known us since before time, and I thank you for that and how purposeful you are with each and every one of us, with each kid who is listening, with me, with parents, with grandparents, with brothers and sisters. Thank you for being so purposeful to love us, Jesus. I pray that today you would give each child listening ears to hear you, eyes to see you, hearts that want to obey, and Lord, that you would show them the love that you have for them. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. All right, so we have a Bible verse to learn today, just like we do every Sunday. And this week's Bible verse, Are You Ready?, is Genesis 1.27. And it says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. That means God created you. Are you a male or a female? Are you a boy or a girl? He created you in his own image. So today, while we talk about God creating in his own image, I thought I would try and see if I can create a person in my image. Um, we're going to do that while we memorize the verse. So the very first thing that I'm going to work on today on my person is um, a torso. Okay, everybody, that's like your, your body. And I'm going to make this while we memorize our verse. So let's all say it together. Genesis 1:27. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Good job. Very good. All right. We've got a torso. I'm going to kind of try and make some shoulders. We'll go a little bit narrower up like that. All right, guys. How does that look? You like it? <laughs> okay. All right. The next thing we're going to do, what should we make next? We should make, I wonder if when God was creating Adam and Eve, the very first man and the first woman, did he make them bit by bit or all at once? I don't know. I wonder. All right, let's do our memory verse again as I make this head. Genesis 127. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Good job. All right, so I've kind of got this head formed. It's not a perfect circle, but my head's not a perfect circle either. And the truth is, only God is perfect at creating things. He's the only one that doesn't mess it up. God doesn't make a mistake. Let's see. Let's smooth out the neck part. Because I don't think I have a line where my head attaches to my body. Here we go. All right. There we go. We've got a torso and we've got a head. What comes next? Arms. Okay, let's make some arms. Got two arms going here. Let's say our memory verse together again. Genesis 1:27. I can't hold my. There we go. <laughs> Good. God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. <laughs> Good job. It's hard for me to put my hand up to my ear at the same time that I am trying to make this person. Oop, that looks like a lobster claw. I'm not gonna make a lobster claw. I don't have a lobster claw, claw so I can't make a lobster claw. claw. <laughs> I'm trying to make this person in my image. Here we go. We've got my best rendition of an arm and a hand. See, Oop, there we go. Let me do one more real quick. While I do, let's say our memory verse one more time. Genesis 1:27. <laughs> God created man in his own image. In his own image, he created them. Male and female, he created them. I love that. I love that he created them in his own image. This one, I'm working really hard to make this hand look the same. It's not perfect, but 
There we go. All right, let's do some legs. And let's do our memory verse together one more time. Let's make sure I have equal pieces. Genesis 1 27. God created man in his own image, in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. <laughs> Good job. All right, we'll go like this. We'll stick a little leg on. Just so you all know, I'm not the greatest artist in the world and I'm trying to make a leg with a foot. It's not gonna have a leg to stand on. Let's do one more time. Genesis 1 God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Good job, I've got another leg with a foot going on. Oop. One of my legs is longer than the other. That might be true in real life too. Did Sometimes we have one limb that's longer than the other. Here we go. We've got, here's my person. Do you, does this person look like they're created in my image? Be honest. <laughs> I don't know. Let's put some hair on this person. We'll go maybe about shoulder length and see if that really helps. Let's do our memory verse together again. Genesis 1 27. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And there we go. This is a little bit, this is a little bit better. Now that my person has hair, can you guys see? Hi. Hi, image of Cam. Now, do you think that I can make this come to life? The Bible tells us that after God formed man from the dust of the ground, he blew into man's nostrils the breath of life. I'm going to tell you something. I don't think there is any way that I will ever be able to bro blow the breath, <laughs> I can't say it, blow the breath of life into this little person. There's no way I can bring this person to life. When God made us in his image, he blew his own breath, his life into us so that we could live. I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to put this little person away and we're going to get ready to dive into our Bible story. All right. I put my little person away. She's sitting quietly down over there. Of course she's quiet because I wasn't able to breathe the breath of life into her. Did you guys know in your spare time, when you have some time to be creative, you can take Play-Doh or modeling dough or anything like that. You can even take dirt. The dust of the ground is what the Bible says that you and I were formed out of, Adam and Eve were formed out of. And you can try and create a little person. But the truth is, no matter how you or I, no matter how hard you or I try, we can't breathe life into them. Only God can create life. And we are living because we were made in his image. So today we are going to be in the book of Mark in chapter 12. If you'd like to grab your Bibles, this is a great time. Push pause. I'll be here waiting for you. Go get them and then come on back. For those of you who have your Bibles, go ahead, turn to the book of Mark. It's the second book in the New Testament and then find chapter 12. We're going to start in verse 13 today. Jesus has been in and out of the temple. You guys remember several weeks ago, he cleaned out the temple and then he began teaching. He filled the temple with his presence. Well, there were some there, even those people who were created in his image who weren't very happy about it. He had disrupted what they thought was a really good thing. Today, the Pharisees are back. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 12, verse 13, that some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus in order to trap him by getting him to say something that he shouldn't say. Now, you guys might remember from a long time ago, the Pharisees and the Herodians are enemies of each other. They don't like each other. But today, once again, they are joined in a cause to trap Jesus. So they came to him and they said, teacher, we know you always tell the truth. Do you think that they meant that? 
No, we know that you always tell the truth. We know that you're not partial and that you always teach the way of God in truth. Do you think they meant that? <laughs> Probably not. So they said, we want to know, is it lawful to pay a poll tax to, to Caesar or not? Now, these are Jews and the Jews for a long time, a lot of you guys know, were under the rule of Rome. And the leader of Rome was called Caesar. And they wanted to know, should we as Jews be paying taxes to a Roman leader, to Caesar? Well, Jesus, the Bible tells us in verse 15, he knew they were hypocrites. Jesus knew that they were there to trap them, to trap him. Do you think Jesus was going to allow himself to be trapped by the Pharisees and the Herodians that day? No, I don't think so either. So he told them, this is what I want you to do. Bring me a denarius. A denarius was a Roman coin, and I want to look at it. So they brought him a denarius, a Roman coin, and Jesus held it up. And he said to them, whose likeness, that means whose picture and whose inscription is on this coin. And I brought a coin today. It's a really, really, really big one. And I want to know, can any of you tell me whose likeness, whose picture, whose profile is on this coin? This is a big, big, big version of a quarter. Shout it out if you know. Anybody? Did you guys get it? George Washington, the very first president of the United States, is on this picture. And the Jews, the Pharisees, they wanted to know that day, should we be paying taxes? You guys, your parents, we all of us grown-ups, we all pay taxes. When we make money, we then give a part of it to the government. And a lot of that is how our country is run. But Caesar's taxes, the Roman taxes, weren't always just. And the Pharisees, they were angry about it. So they, they looked at the likeness and the likeness on the coin that they gave Jesus. It was a picture of Caesar. So Jesus said to them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. This is Caesar's. I want you to give it to him. This is a, a picture of George Washington. I want you to give it to the American government. Here you go. Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and give to God the things that are God's. And I have a question for you guys. Can anyone tell me, how do we know what is God's? Any ideas? Psalm 24, 1 says, the earth, the earth is the Lord and all it contains. The world, I think that means more than just the earth. That means the the whole the whole creation and everyone who dwells in it, all of this belongs to God. So technically the whole world is God's, right? But when Jesus was answering the Pharisees that day, what was he holding in his hand? He was holding a coin with an inscription on it and with the image of Caesar. So I wonder for you and me, can you, anyone tell me is there anything in the world that has God's image on it? Any ideas? What in the world, what in the whole universe is stamped with the image of God? Our Bible verse today, Genesis 1:21 says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. That means man and woman. In your case, boy and girl, he created them. You guys, it's true. The Bible tells us, you guys remember, we talked about this a little bit earlier, that when God formed man from the dust of the ground, he breathed life into his nostrils. Did you know that there is absolutely nothing else in all of creation that is stamped with the image of God? Just you and me, people. Jesus said, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Give to God the things that are God's. How can you and I, stamped with the image of God, give ourselves to him? It's a really tough question, right? But I want you to know something before you answer it. Each and every one of us, every boy, every girl, each one of you are made in the image of God. You 
we are his most special creation. We look like him. Maybe we do things like him that he loves to play, to draw, to make music, to dance, to swim, to taste. Because God, he loves all of those things too, right? What we do know is that the very best part of being made in the image of God is that God made us to be close to him. The Bible tells us that after he formed Adam and Eve from the dust of the ground, after he made them in his own image, after he breathed the breath of life into them, he used to walk with them in the garden. He used to hang out with them, just like we get to hang out with each other. Jesus created us in his image so that we could have a relationship with him. He wants to walk with us. He wants to talk with us. And that's why Jesus came. Because Adam and Eve sinned, right? And the Bible tells us that their sin separated mankind. That's all of us. That our sin separated us from God for all time. But then Jesus came. Jesus came so that he could die on a cross so that our sins could be forgiven. Jesus came so that he could rise again and breathe eternal life into us. He came to him so that we could be close to him. You know what else? We're going to talk a little bit now about why and how we can give ourselves to God. Those The Jews back then, they had to physically just hand the money to Romans who would come and collect their taxes. They actually even had Jews who had become traitors almost, and they would take other Jews' money to give to the Romans as taxes. That sounds horrible. Giving ourselves to God is not a horrible thing, though. How can we do that? One of the biggest ways is that you and I, we can remember that we, that's our body, our soul, which is our mind, and our spirit, they're not our own. They are His. And so we can give ourselves to him to love and obey him. We can also give him our sins. Remember, the Bible tells us that on the cross, Jesus bore our sins, all of my sins, all of your sins. And today, instead of holding on to them, instead of always remembering them, we can give our sins to God. We can ask for forgiveness and he will forgive us all of our sins. So we can give our love to him. We can give our whole selves to him. We can give him our sins. We can give him all of our emotions too. We talked about that last week when we talked about searching for God with all of our hearts. Remember, we can give him all of our emotion. We can give him all of our sadness, all of our happiness. We can give him all of our hurt. We can give him all of our laughter. He wants all of us. Does anyone ever think, well, that kind of sounds a little bit selfish. Why does God want everything? The truth is, God has given all of himself to us. There's nothing that he holds back from you and from me because he loves us. And because he loves us, he asks us to give him all of us back. Because that's how God created love, right? To go both ways. Think about your parents. They both need to love each other. Think about your brothers and sisters. You need to love each other in order for your relationship to be good and wonderful. And that is what God wants for us. There is absolutely no way that he will ever stop loving us. Even if we don't love him, even if we don't give him all of us, God always loves. He is the very first one to love. But... He knows that the absolute best thing for us forever and for always is him. Jesus created you and me (laughs) in his own image, just like I tried to create this little person in mine and failed miserably. He created us in his image because he loves us. And he knows that in order for us to receive his love, We give him our love in return. Because you and I, we were stamped with the image of God, created in his image. Male and female, he created us. He created you. 
He created you because he loves you. He created you for a purpose. And that purpose is so that the whole world can see the love of God. We can reflect that. That's part of his image is that we can reflect his love for, for us to the whole world. Let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you for each one of these kids who are listening. I thank you that you made them. I thank you that the Bible tells us that you knit each child together in their mama's tummy. Jesus, I thank you that you sing over each one of them because you love them so much. Jesus, I pray that today each child would know that even before they came from their parents, they come from you. Special created in your image. And Jesus, that even today, even as they grow, and even as things in the world are hard, or even as we sin, even as we hurt, even as we have all of these emotions, you still say, I have given all of myself to you. Give all of yourself to me because I love you. Jesus, I pray that if there are any kids today who have not given all of them to you, if they have not yet received all of you for them, I pray that they would today. I, then I pray that they would know that even while they are created in your image, they can also be filled with you, filled with your spirit, and that the whole world will see them reflecting you. Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. And I do pray, Lord, that you would write it on each child's heart. Write your words of love on their hearts. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. I love you guys even more than that. You know this because I've told it to you 20 times today. Jesus loves you.